Should cyclists be forced to wear helmets? It's a subject guaranteed to start an argument. Have you got a helmet on? No! I don't have to wear a helmet! Everyone has an opinion. The problem is, they're not normally based on evidence. So let's start with something straightforward. I don't have a problem with bike helmets. In fact, when I ride a bike, I usually wear one. And if I fall off my bike and my helmet's properly fitted and I hit something at low speed, the evidence shows it's probably going to help me. So, making cyclists wear helmets is a good thing, right? Well, here's where it starts to get complicated. Let's hear first from a doctor who deals directly with head injuries. I've seen patients the same devastating skull fractures, brain injuries, even dead and survival brain injuries as a consequence of the head striking the ground. Last year, when I was cycling across America, a truck's wing mirror smashed into the back of my head at 70 miles an hour, knocking me off my bike and onto the road. But I was lucky. I was wearing a helmet. If I hadn't been, I'd be dead. I honestly believe um, that cycle helmet legislation would significantly reduce the proportion of cyclists that are currently killed on our roads. So it's pretty clear, helmets can save lives. But let's hear now from another doctor, one who looks at health, not just for individuals, but across whole populations. There are very good indications that forcing people to wear bike helmets makes cycling less appealing to people and probably reduces the amount of cycling that takes place. And there's an overwhelming body of evidence that the health benefits of cycling vastly, vastly outweigh the health risks. Also, cycling isn't as dangerous as people think. Here in Britain, there's one death for about every 30 million miles cycled. That's around 100 cyclists killed every year. In fact, it's about as safe as walking. But in that same year, well over 85,000 people die early because of illness caused by inactive living. Many things like heart disease, diabetes and cancer, and these are precisely the sort of conditions that cycling can play a really, really big role in preventing. Cycling is one of the best ways that we can help fight that. I mean, cycling as part of transport, as part of everyday life, means that people get a moderate workout regularly. It's not something that they have to go to the gym to do. They can do it on the way to work, on the way to the shops and so on. So enforcing the wearing of cycle helmets, even if it were the case that it made cycling safer, would still lead to an overall cost in public health terms. And something else happens when cyclists put on a helmet, something that seems hardwired into our nature. Scientists call it risk compensation. Basically that means if you have more protection, you tend to take more risks. Yeah, we got people into the lab and we told them we were going to look at decision making whilst they wore an eye tracking device. It came with a baseball cap or it came with a bicycle helmet. And then we got them to do various decision making tasks and gambling tasks. Uh, we found that the people who were given the helmets took more risks on the gambling task and seemed to show higher sensation-seeking measures. So riders seem to be using that extra protection to be more reckless. But here's where it gets more scary. Other road users then seem to take more risks with cyclists too. In another experiment, Ian went out on his bike fitted with a measuring device. Sometimes he wore a helmet, sometimes he didn't. And he found that when he's wearing the helmet, the traffic would, on average, pass in more closely, sometimes dangerously so. We had two possible explanations for that. It might just be that if you're wearing a helmet, you look more experienced and drivers respond to that. Or the other possible explanation was drivers were essentially thinking, he's protected, I can take risks. So what has happened when countries have made bike helmets compulsory? Scientists have done major studies in three countries Canada, New Zealand and Australia to try and find out whether helmets improve overall safety. Keep your head together, wear a helmet. Their conclusion? There's no evidence that they do. This is why lots of cycling experts get really frustrated when cycle safety campaigns get based around helmets and high-vis only. Wear a bicycle helmet every time that you ride. Gotta strap it on, kids. Wear your helmets with pride. Someone who knows these frustrations better than most is Chris Boardman, the former Olympic champion turned cycle campaigner. Helmets uh, are, are quite a divisive topic. They tend to be people's reaction to an environment. I feel helpless, there's nothing I can do. But cycling is a safe activity. It is the environment that's dangerous. It's that that we need to change. 
The Dutch have spent 40 years building safe bike lanes, and over there, almost nobody rides wearing a helmet. But in the Netherlands, cycling is about four times as safe as it is in Britain. One thing the Dutch do is removing a lot of the motor traffic from neighbourhoods so that residential streets are not really busy with people trying to cut through, avoid the main road, you know, take a shortcut and so on. I would suggest to people, if you want to wear a helmet, wear a helmet and whatever makes you feel comfortable to ride a bike. And I think for all of us, the message is, if there is a freedom to choose, which of course there should be, then let it be a freedom, which means I'm not going to impose my will on you either way. In fact, if you look purely at head injuries for all road users, the greatest number is amongst motorists. So maybe if anyone should be forced to wear helmets, it should be them. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Check out the other videos in this series and make sure you subscribe for more.